Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. The Irish Spaghetti Podcast. Like and subscribe. Please enjoy the show. Or are we gonna show him? Oh yeah, we should talk about that too. Actually, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was that was that was not what fine. I was expecting. It's but. a good find. It's a good find. Can I tell that start? Can I can I start that with the yeah? With our, okay, okay. Yeah, five seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Irish Spaghetti Podcast. We're your hosts, Billy G, Nikki P. Nick, how are you? I've seen better days. I know. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, you've been on one, man. You're fired up today, buddy. Yeah, I'm having a tough time today. Did you wake up that way or did it? Because did it, sometimes I'll wake up in a good mood yeah. and motherfuckers just, when they see you're in a good mood, they start popping balloons and pretty soon you're just a string fucking raging. All of my and, balloons yeah. have been popped. <laughs> Every as soon, one of them. As soon as you woke up, it's like, <laughs> I had 10,000 balloons and they've all been popped one at a time. <laughs> Oh and the last God. one that popped like broke my psyche at yeah. the same time. It was like tch, tch, yeah, like a fuse that just I got s- fucking broke. I seen that man. Yeah, you had that last little balloon with a little bit of helium left, just barely kicking on. It was making that high pitched squeaky yeah, sound because was- even that was deflating. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so I always wake up in a bad mood on on work Mondays. Yeah, as we all, no one's fucking not familiar with that feeling in general. Okay, okay. Especially if you have a job where you fucking hate going there and it's yeah. just a clown show the entire time. So Sunday's your Monday. Sunday's my Monday. Yeah, that's a Fo- horrible football way to, yeah. Sunday. Which, by the way, I'm not a football guy. Couldn't care less about it at all. So we were again. We work in restaurants. I'm a waiter. So I go into Guy Fieri's Flavor Town at Paris Bally's or yeah. whatever. It's horseshoe now. It doesn't fucking matter. I still and, say Bally's and everybody knows. Yeah, there's yeah. just dude. There's just like a fucking a, a squad of assholes in there. As soon as I walk in the door, yeah. everyone thinks they should get first service. You know, yeah. I mean? everyone's drunk. They're all ridiculous. It's yeah. just a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. So I know I'm about to go take that face punch today. But hey, what are you gonna do? You got to pay bills, right? Yeah. I had that same exact shift where Sunday was my Monday. Mm-hmm. That's a tough way to start the week off, dude. It That's sucks. a tough way to start the week because it's like you've basically hit this this wall as soon as you start the week off, and now you got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to yeah. look forward to. And it's you start getting anxiety on your day off because yeah. it's all leading up to like the night before. I'm like, fuck, I got to go do this tomorrow. So even while I'm off, I'm still like riddled with anxiety about having to go in there and deal with this shit. Yeah, it's just a shit show, man. It's well, crazy. I have a, I had a pretty. Interesting morning. Uh, can I tell how uh, how mine went? Here? Oh yeah. Okay. So while most of you were at church, <laughs> I was digging in trash. I'm a piece of shit, so I've always been this way. I, okay. There's rules to like taking. I, listen, I'm not like in dumpsters. I don't go dumpster diving. But if that's you, what I picture, I yeah. picture all your shoes <laughs> hanging out of the top, <laughs> my legs going <laughs> like this. No, no. If you drive by and you see like a cool piece of furniture or art or something like that, that's up for grabs. There's rules to this though. You never take uh, like like furniture, like couches or chairs or something like that. God forbid. Unless there, there's a sign. Exactly, because the risk is like you know, God forbid they have fucking bed bugs or no, obviously. Oh, no, I never even thought about no that. Mattresses. That it's not just yeah. disgusting. Exactly. It's just it's just too much of a, you don't take clothes or you don't take furniture. Those are the rules, you know. Uh I'm driving by and I and I tell him I did this double take. So I'm driving by and I look over because it's like it's bulk week um uh, where I live. So everything's on the outside and stuff. And sitting next to it propped up too. So I think whoever got rid of it was like, I'm sure somebody will want it. And he was right. he was dead right. He was dead right. He was dead right. I look over <laughs> and there it is. A motherfucking crossbow, yeah. <laughs> a military level crossbow yeah, that we will get fixed and we will shoot a rage of shit with it. We should I, shoot it on the show. I, I think you have a target. I know exactly. In mind. I was just gonna say I know exactly where to put that first bolt. <laughs> As you guys can see behind me on the wall, the lights no longer work again. <laughs> My roommate's cat shoot through the fucking court. And it's the third set of lights I've bought due to animals destroying this thing for the most part. Did it's, Frankie it's get two? Frankie oh, got two of them? Frankie used to barrel through that back. That yeah. back. Remember I started putting all the equipment in my room? I remember that. We had that dog. We had this dog. It doesn't matter. He's, yeah. he's gone now. I remember he took the hard drive too. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, and he took my hard drive. Oh, that broke my heart. So too. I had a lot of good shit on there. Yeah. 
Nick has a uh, Nick has a short fuse, and I and he he definitely goes off that Italian side on him. You could just tell. You honestly, I'm not even shitting you. Remind me a lot of my dad. Like for real. You you see how comfortable I am with you because yeah, because yeah. you're never my, you, phased you. Yeah, you, you remind me of my dad. It's just the same thing. It's you know what I mean. You just you let them cool off, do that thing. Well, um, that particular night, I remember it's just. He he asked the owner of the dog, and we love Johnny no matter what, but he oh, asked the, the owner of the dog, he goes, well, where else could it have gone? And it was just this uncomfortable <laughs> silence. He's like, how do you know it was Frankie? Yes. I'm like, it wasn't me. Yeah. Like, I just pictured a human being putting in its mouth and running it through the house and pre- like pressing um, it somewhere. I think, I think the giant pile of dog shit next to it was a good clue. <laughs> Did he shit in the house? No, I just said Oh, that. I was going to say. No, no, dude. he did. Yeah. yeah, he did everything in the house. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that dog was completely wild. Was I thought he was feral. trained. I thought he was no. potty. No. No, he was feral. Yeah. He was not trained. Yeah, he was nuts, man. He hit me with them big old mitts of his, dude. They hurt, too, That dog man. was strong, dude. Yeah, dude. It so, was something. So he pulls his crossbow out of the car yeah. when he shows up to the house this morning. And ironically, I was watching Weatherman the night before. Yeah. He's like, and, yeah, when he has the compound bow, he's like, nobody throws things at me anymore. We're, this thing is dope. We're, it has this little thing where it's propped up so you can take it. It's got a little tripod on little the front. So, yes. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That thing is legit. We should shoot it on the show. We should. Yeah. We should. What are we going to shoot? I don't know. We'll figure something um, out. I, with, with, a comp- with an actual compound bow, I remember I, um, I shot a cactus mm-hmm. and, the, and the, uh, the arrow went right there. Like, it has, like arrows, like now, it's funny because you're thinking Robin Hood arrows or they carve and put the fire. No, no, no. They're <laughs> razor blades. At the end, yeah, like it's deadly. Those things are deadly. Yeah, they don't like just stick in you and kind of fillet around. Yeah, Yeah. I hit a cactus in the side. I remember, I remember we went to get it out, like because you're thinking it's on the other side. Yeah, it was, I don't know, 50 feet that way. What do you think is worse, getting shot with an arrow or a bullet? An arrow, me too. Yeah. I think it does more damage. I think it hits more shit. I, I think, think it's more yeah. horrifying. Yeah. Like it's like sticking through you. You're just yeah. like, and every, here's the thing I used to tell, I used to talk about this all the time is that the worst part about a bow and arrow is like every one that you get hit with is a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're always like just having whatever your day or whatever. And it's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like that Ace Ventura scene where he's like, yeah. What is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? You know what? A uh, bullet. I, I mean, you, the the worst part about it would be the um, would be the the burn to it. I mean, if it gets stuck inside. You. But Agreed. doesn't it like self like uh, you know how like when you burn a wound so it doesn't bleed? I cauterize. Forgot, cauterize it. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it depends on the type of round that they used to. Yeah. Like and if it's a hollow tip, you're fucked because it just explodes inside. Yeah, of you. it all yeah. breaks it apart. That or if arrow, the bullet though, gets stuck somewhere where they can't do surgery, like you just have to deal with that. Yeah. Like there's there's. That, that's the only thing about an arrow is there's always a handle, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that, that cold, yeah, but that also fucks you up, too. That's why, like, remember in uh, Braveheart when the old man, he didn't pull it straight out. He broke it off so, and he, pushed could, it through? so he could go fight. No, no, oh, no, no, no. He yeah, left yeah, it in. I don't exactly. remember. I never saw all of Braveheart. Dude, I know. If you left it hanging there and then you go to fight, you're just asking for trouble. He's like, you run and hit a wall against something. That it's just wagging. so <laughs> bad. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. It's funny he knew what to do, though. What a warrior, man. That guy was awesome. Was he? Yeah. Was he? real no the the old man in braveheart he's done a, mu- a million movies he was the redhead's dad oh yes I, you're not gonna die <laughs> you know i need to watch that movie through and through it's amazing oh can i tell you something real quick yeah. i've been on an, an 80s movies kick so i love them yeah so we went to green valley ranch and we rented a room whatever and on tv because it's halloween they were playing john carpenter's the thing with kurt russell oh yeah ne- never seen it before right yeah so I'm just sitting there and it's just on and immediately I'm like dragged into the story all the acting was phenomenal and what I realized we always talk about how CGI sucks but it's been a while since I've gone back and just watched an older movie dude number one like the effects were phenomenal because yeah. everything is real yeah. it's a real model it's a real mechanical whatever monster it, everything is so you, you have a connection to it automatically right off the bat yeah. it's, just, it's crazy how much better it was everything was way better even like so I went on a kick I watched Alien 1 I watched Alien and like even when they're walking through the ship like it's a real corridor they yeah. built a real set yeah. so you just connect to it on a level that you can't even put into words CGI is garbage as a matter of fact we tried to watch Prometheus yeah, because she was like oh that's the prequel to the Alien movies and I hadn't seen them all through and through I've only seen like scenes of them so we watch Alien 1 after the thing I'm gripped by all this already yeah. we put on Prometheus I got 25 minutes in and we had to shut it off I didn't give a fuck. I was going to say, Prometheus is newer, right? I couldn't care less about any of the actors or any of the characters at all. Literally every single thing in the movie was CGI, so you don't feel connected to it on any level. And the amount of uh, smash cutting. 
they just cut, cut, cut. Mm. Two seconds on a frame, cut. Two seconds on a frame, cut. Two seconds on a frame, cut. I'm like, you dude, I can't, at the end I can't get into it. I yeah. can't land on any part of the story. Even when they do show something, it's only for a couple of frames and it's fucking gone. Go back and watch the thing. When that monster shows up multiple times with the alien or whatever the creature is, do you see it on screen in long form for a while? You really get to like sink into it. Yeah. It's not just gone, here and gone, here and gone. And again, like it's a real thing. So it just looks amazing. It's so much better. Even little scenes like there's a scene where they're all inside of the base or whatever and they're talking trying to get a game plan and they're showing him walk and it's just it's a wide shot of him walking then joins the group then they have the conversation you see them all on screen at the same time nowadays what they do is like if you're talking it's you and then if i'm talking it's me and then if you're talking it's you and it's just this back and forth back and forth back and forth i'm getting fucking brain damage I used to watching like this when shit. you'd hear them off camera talking and you're getting a like a response like I, quentin tarantino Penny, does it no one pans looking anymore. at you yeah. like, like bruce willis when uh, marcellus wallace was yes. talking about him and he's like Fuck pride, and you're seeing his face, and you're seeing him like kind of change it. You it, feel it them, means and, the, something. and yeah. there's nuance. You're getting their reaction, yeah. and because yeah. everything is all formulaic now, where it's like we need one white guy, one black guy, one Asian kid, one badass girl, one badass guy, one dopey dude. Yeah, it's, it's so contrived, and and like it's just there's no authenticity in it at all. No. And I realize in stark reality when I watch those older movies, the difference. It's tremendous. When there's you, texture, there's breadth, there's nuance, there's depth, there's yeah. all, all, novelty. We've we've washed out all novelty out of society. Yeah. Now everything is just a, a cookie cutter carbon copy, like all the fucking houses we live in. It's well, disgusting. Well, they took their ability away to just create. Yes. You know what I mean? What whatever comes to mind, that's the best idea. No, no, you can't have that anymore. No. Now 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 there's a formula to follow. And it's unnatural. It ruins it. Yeah. It's unnatural. It's weird. You know what? There's and, no soul. There's no soul in anything anymore. And even going far back, like like all right, you know, you got the you got the eighties kick, right? Go go to go to go to the. Uh, I think I think two thousand one Space Odyssey was. Uh, Odyssey was. We have that on our list. Right? I created a yeah. whole monster movie and like old school movies list. Look that's at on that there. set. It's gorgeous. gorgeous. It's a spaceship design. I, I, everything's real, like Dude, you said. It's even unreal. stuff like when they're in the hull of the ship and they're like, you know, it's the old school computers, but everything is buttons. Yeah. So there's real buttons and real lights on everything. Yeah. So when they're just click, it's like click, 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 and it's all visceral. And the dials and, see, and knobs yes. and stuff. Like they yeah. go through an automatic door or whatever, and you see it like open like a camera apparatus, and then it closes. I'm like, that was real. They built yeah. that. That's yeah. not CGI. Yeah. So then we go to Prometheus, and there's a scene where he's like tapping on the wall, and like the wall's like lighting up, and you could tell that he's not interacting with anything. You just see the lights. You see the computer generated wall and all that bullshit, and the lights are lighting up. And I'm like, dude, none of this is real at all. Like you're not. <laughs> Wait, you don't let, feel like you're there. Let me ask you a question. It's garbage. Now. Well, all right now. All right, you walk, you see these movies, right? And the guy's like walking down, like, you know, the hallway, and the door's like, Psh! yes. And it's like closing, like, oh my God. Didn't they have automatic doors like at mini marts and shit back then? Well, so they, that, how long but not those the crazy cool ones that they created. Oh, like the ones that movie. go straight up. Like, well, this one literally opens circular like a camera. Oh, yeah, that's apparatus. That is absolutely Well, dope. even yeah. in like in the old uh, 1970s Star Treks and all that shit, they had two guys on either side of the door that would go. And yeah. open and close the door, so they didn't have that back then. But the, the point is, is that like you resonate with it because it's actually real. Is that the alien creature real? No, but it's a real. What's a, a model? Yeah. It's a real model. They made a mechanical creature that changes in front of you in real time, and it's fucking visceral, man. It's awesome. You're sitting. It's with, so awesome, you're, it, dude. It's 1976. You're sitting with your family, and you're and you're watching the movie, and you're watching the credits, yeah. and you see your name. It's like. Door guy operator number two. And yes, you're like, there I am. I was part of it. I was part of it. But we even made like, this um, together, baby. Even like violence or blood or like. So there's a scene yeah. where this dude gets shot in the eyeball in a, in the thing or whatever, and he's laying there, and they they pan around, they show because they made a model head. Yeah, right. So it, it's cool. It's like how did they make that? You know, all that shit gets kind of involved in. Mm -hmm. We're like, that's crazy. They First were of all, the thing is it. amazing. It's, yeah. a, it's the best monster movie I've ever seen. Yeah. by the way, hands down. You never watched hands that before? No, so good. it blew my it's, my. it's one of my all time favorite movies ever. Yeah. I swear to God, yeah. it, it really. Had an impact on me, but so they they pan around, they show the guy that got shot in the eye, and they had they created the bullet hole and the bloods on the on the face on the the model, and the head looks real and all that shit, and it's shocking. Like how you a feel wound it. would look, yes, how it would look. And they then, thought of everything, yes, yeah. and then go back to the newer ones or whatever. So we're watching. We watched it, which was great. You know the new <sighs> yeah. one. I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong, but all the blood is CGI. All the wounds are CGI. Dude, especially and the see, second half. It's especially CGI. the second yes. half of it. The first one with the kids, they had some real, some you know. Yeah. The second half of it, it was like he went. 
went, the director went nuts with the CGI. It's all CGI. The, the Paul Bunyan? Yeah. Dude, that was fucking stupid. Yeah, and I'm just like, dude, but again, like, you could always, it's the uncanny valley thing. You His, could always tell. So, like, the um, clown, like, eh, it was bad. It was well, bad. remember how I was telling you to watch uh, Blood and Honey? Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, guys. I watched, Don't sleep I, I, on I, that I, shit. I watched the first 20 minutes of dude, it. Dude, yeah. it's fucked up. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Messed up. Dude, Piglet's a monster, yes. bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we, so we watched that and we're like, oh, this is awesome or whatever. Let's find some other ones. So we're like, what about Cocaine Bear? Because we like stupid, hokey bullshit. Sure. We, we watched the trailer for it. The bear is so CGI'd up that both of us were like, this looks like shit. And we just fucking... T- At one point, the bear jumps like 30 feet into the back of the van. It's like, dude, this is garbage. I'd rather see the Jaws shark. Yeah. It's way more fucked up. Absolutely. Um, you know when the first time that... Uh, well, the earliest CGI that I could recall that I've seen in a movie? Mm. 70s uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Really? Yeah. With... Um, uh, what's his, Who's the kid from uh, The Lost Boys? Southern, Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland, Yeah, yes. which was... Which I love Donald Sutherland. He's a fucking amazing actor. Well, he's in there. And they had walk up and they had... They pretend to be part of it. So mm-hmm. you got to like... No emotion. You like walk. And all of a sudden, this dog runs up with a human head mm-hmm. and it was CGI. I'm telling you right now, this was a week ago. It scared the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I've seen amazing things. It, why, why did it look better then? It was because so it odd. was real. Yeah. It's as simple. Yeah. They built real, complex, beautifully, artistically they made dog, models, like a, like man. A human, like, 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 thing on no. the dog. It might have been that. That's what, bo- dude. So, even um, there's a scene in It or whatever where he's killing the sheep with yeah. the, you remember? Mm-hmm. He's got the little fucking the little the thing bolt. that comes out. Yeah. yeah, like from No Country for Old Men or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. And uh, the sheep was CGI. And I looked at Jenny. I'm like, you know what would have worked really great there? A real sheep. That I could just get a sheep. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying to kill the sheep. I'm saying get a sheep, create effects or whatever. As soon as it was CGI, I just emotionally disconnect. Yeah. They, like, by the way, they shot care. that in Dairy Country, Maine. You're telling me they kind of have like one sheep it's lying horrible. around? It's horrible. CGI yeah. sucks. Go back. Can you imagine how much further along we'd be creating models and actual sets if we just stuck with that old art form? Yeah. It's better. Go back and watch an old movie. You'll be fucking drawn in. You'll care about the characters. That was the other thing, too, is uh, when Prometheus gets off the ground, they land on the planet. We watched, you know, a bit of it or whatever, like I said, like 30 minutes, 25 minutes. But I, there's not one of them I gave a fuck about. I wasn't interested in any of them. I couldn't care less if they lived or died. There wasn't, like, the the, the multiple characters. It was, like, one guy's a cool guy, one yeah. guy's the asshole. You know what I mean? They used to have, like, tropes. Yeah. Like, now it's like they're all kind of the same. They're yeah. not clever. They're not witty. The dialogue is trash. No one has sarcasm. No one's funny. There's no robustness in the way that people speak because everything's been whitewashed out by this PC horseshit, yeah. basically. Well, it's, you know, it's garbage. You know, it's funny. You, you can almost, like, tell it coming. Like, if it's, like, a young black teenage girl, mm-hmm. she's going to be a genius with like incredible engineering skills like in every like Marvel movie yeah. for some reason she's just this brilliant you know what I mean if you got like a, a middle aged white dude he's gonna be a piece of shit yes. you know what I mean you already like, know before yeah. it even starts and, and it's like dude honestly if, if, if it's but really not that real predictable people. it's like are you fucking kidding dude, me I don't the people that we see in movies every time they come out with something I don't ever find them in real life unless I'm in California yeah. or like in some kind of like democratic like nut job area mm-hmm. you don't find all my friends in real life are pretty relatively you and I talk all kinds yeah. of shit. All the people yeah. I know at work are real people. It's like, I don't see that mirror my own reality. So how am I supposed to connect to it? Yeah. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. You know what would be funny though? Like imagine like they get off uh, set and the, the white guy, the, the piece of shit, and then the little black girl that's an engineer, they, she's like, so what are you doing? He's like, oh, I got to go to my other job. She's like, she's like, oh, I'm, a, I'm actually an engineer. And mm-hmm. then the little girl's like, oh, I'm actually a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just says it. <laughs> it's just like reverse it out. Well, another thing that I noticed too, dude, like- <laughs> Um, <laughs> through all the 80s movies everyone smokes cigarettes which oh, by I the way that. I love this yeah. I fucking love it man like they're all like smoking and you can see that there's an there's an air of like laxness in like just their behavior nowadays if you saw someone smoking you'd like ew that's bad for your health yeah. no one could just relax and just be social and have a good time and just like just be as you are everything has to be like this whitewash perfection it's yeah. like dude Bring back cigarettes. Well, I bring I, back cigarettes. I remember as a little kid, some of my favorite, like my most fondest memories, was watching the adults talk, and they'd all be smoking cigarettes. Yeah. And my job, besides listening to their stories and being all fascinated with stuff and laughing because my dad's cracking jokes, something like that, um, my job was to empty out the ashtray. I'd have to grab the ashtray, yeah. run over the trash can, <clears> dump <throat> it out, bring it back, set it down. I used to you be know that what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You know, we well, we all did at that time. It was wonderful. Dude, it was the great. last. It was the last great generation. Well, they, they're all really like was. real men and yeah. real women. Yes. 
They're real people. Yeah. Like I remember in the thing or whatever, and Jenny would point it out. Playing we were laughing spades, about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a scene like every time one of them goes back to like their cabin or their quarters, they all have like a bottle of liquor on their desk. <laughs> yeah. So like Kurt Russell, right? He's a man's man or whatever, and you know he's trying to figure out this situation. He's like the even tempered guy. That's like the strategist, yeah. if you will. Yeah. And he looks the guy right in the face, and he's like, "Man, he's like, it's been a long day or whatever." He's like, "I just want to go back to my cabin and get drunk." Yeah. And he just says it flat out like that, and then he goes back to his cabin and he's recording like an audio file in case they all die. So if they find it, there'll be a record of what happened. And he's just sitting there pouring himself whiskeys and just drinking and just, and, but it's human. It's fucking human, yeah. man. And then he lights up a cigarette and you could see the stress as he's smoking it. You know what I mean? Like he's contemplating mm-hmm. and it's just real. It's real. It's, he's not sitting there drinking a kale shake. Well, now like he was dope. Bro. Now if they, they did do a remake, but now if he made the movie right right now, if they made that movie, he'd go, I just want to go back to my cabin and get drunk <laughs> and then lean over and just start making out with the dude. <laughs> yeah. It would be called my pronouns are the thing. Yeah. The thing. <laughs> that would be the in name. Your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the name of the movie. Oh, the they. <laughs> the, <laughs> the alien is indignant. <laughs> Or it's like it's like he's coming after, and some woman just shouts. I was like, "Don't call him a he. You don't know if that's you know what I mean." Like, what? It's wild though. But anyway, so I highly recommend any of you out there just go back and watch an older classic movie like that, and I guarantee you, you'll be emotionally invested in a way that you haven't been in decades. After this, I want to show you that dog and tell me if it's CGI, okay? Okay. All right, man. So we got a uh, we got a couple things on the docket here, man. Last night was fight night, and uh, what an abomination! Yeah, what a letdown uh, Dylan Dennis was, and. uh, and honestly, uh, I mean, I, I saw the Logan Paul fight. Like I said, I only heard about the KSI fight. Apparently, there was a lot of hugging going on. Like, I, I wanted you to tell this because how Nick explained it, it's like it doesn't matter if Fury won or not, however people feel. It's the point is that Fury should have put this kid away like, Easily. like nothing. Like, like, Easily. Like, 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 like an old video. Like he should have just, that's he it. He should have right? walked yeah. through him, beat him up, and went home with a fat check after three rounds. Yeah. That's what he should have done. Yeah. Like, he's literally acting like he won the, the championship. Dude, but yeah. well, we talked about the last time when he fought Jake Paul and he was like, like crying. I'm a real, yeah, he's like, I'm a real boxer. Everyone knows I'm just in here to beat you up and just get an easy paycheck and go home. But then when he wins the fight, he breaks down into tears. He's like hugging his family. It's like, dude, you, you talked the whole time about how you're just going to beat up some YouTube bum and how it's nothing and you shouldn't even be there. He even says, like, I'm not even going to celebrate. Like, that's how sure I am going to win. Lies. Yeah. You suck, bro. They're yeah. competitive fights with you. You suck. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Just stop, man. Like a lower level, you know, actual pro, they'd kill these guys, right? Uh, there's like, no doubt. Anyone they, with, with, with I mean, remote competency yeah. as a boxer would beat the shit out of all these guys, dude. What about Jake Paul, though? We thought we still think Jake he Paul has, has like talent. A, yeah. No, he has the goods. He does have talent, but he's still very early in his career. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? You're talking about like fighting Canelo and shit, dude. Do it. Please do yeah. it. Let's let's let that public execution happen so we can be done with this once and for all. If you really think that might be real danger, right? <laughs> if you really That's think that, real danger. That you're coming in there to, to give something to Canelo that he's never seen before, yeah. that he can't deal with, you're delusional. It's it's insanity. But they just say it for promotions, dude. It's bullshit. Yeah, and you know Canelo, like he wouldn't need to sell the fight at all. You know, like the press would come up and they go, Canelo, Canelo, what do you think about? It? And he'd be some like like um yeah, it's okay. You know, I, mean, I, I know I'm doing Anderson, so I forgot what Canelo sounds like, but he's like, yeah, it's okay. I, I'm going to punch him in the face and beat him. You know, Canelo I mean? would do what Tommy Fury had said he was yeah. going to do. He yeah, would the literally same do same thing. That, yeah, yeah, he would be like, yeah. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to knock him out in one or two rounds. I'm going to take a $10 million paycheck or whatever they're paying him, and I'm going to leave. And I'll, <laughs> I'll fight tomorrow. Yeah. He won't yeah. even He won't even, it won't even. even be a scratch. He'll on use guy. him as a training day for an upcoming yeah. fight. That's yeah. what I love about Tyson Fury, because he's fighting in Ganu. <laughs> This so, is going so, down? Yeah. It's, it's happening? Yeah, it's, it's set up. It's already happened. Beautiful. I think it's, I, I might, it might be in Saudi Arabia or something like this. But the point is that, so he agreed. This is how much Tyson Fury is like the real deal. He signs the contract to fight Francis Ngannou. Mm-hmm. And then the next day books his next fight with Alexander Usyk like six months later. And everyone's like, that's so disrespectful to Ngannou. Like, why would he do that? Because he knows for a fact that it's not a fight. He's going to walk in there, beat the shit out of him for free, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for, he's not going to take any damage. Really. He's going to just walk out. He'll be ready to fight in six months. So his, and that's a mind game. They're masters at mind games. Yeah. He's basically saying, like, this is how not shit you are to me, that I'm willing to book another hard date for another fight with a real fighter yeah. after I start you real quick. Well, yeah, this he's is the same guy that bothered uh, yeah. Deontay Wilder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Deontay Wilder, which, by the way, is a <laughs> warrior. And they had three of the best heavyweight fights ever. One of the best trilogies, in my opinion, of all fucking time. And what's Ngannou going to do? Yeah. You think he is harder than Deontay Wilder? Yeah, that's Deontay Wilder I was just about to make that comparison. Yes. I was just about to make that comparison. I'm like, I'm like okay, so they, they're giving uh, him, like, insane power. 
more than Deontay Wilder? More than the hardest the puncher hitting ever, that's ever been? Real Ivan Drago? Who also has good training and, is, yeah. is, and you know, has skills. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a beast, man. Yeah. And Gano's going to get in fact, slaughtered. The, in fact, the, the last fight with um, Tyson Fury was the best he ever looked because he actually was going out there and he was actually Dude, you know doing some skills. stuff like that. Take a look like at that. Tyson yeah. Fury in the, uh, in the press conferences and in the training videos now. He literally is well. He's way overweight. He's <laughs> shaking his belly at Francis Ngannou. He's fat. So love handles, just all that. Dude, he's not even trying to get into shape. He's making a mockery out of Francis Ngannou. Yeah. He's going in there fatter than he's ever he been. Ever he be should a... be in a Santa Claus suit on the way out, bro. Could he ever be in good shape, though? Not really. His no, body style. No, he has style, bot is this weird, Well, right? like, he, not appearance-wise. He, he's in the most elite oh, of shape. Yeah, Conditioning yeah. is phenomenal. He's strong as I'm a I'm just bull. saying looking, like, like yeah. how he His looks. His dad told him that. He was like, you're never going to be body beautiful. He's like, just give that shit up and just fight how you're supposed to fight, basically. Yeah, like, you yeah. know what I mean? But it doesn't. But the thing is that, like, that's the truth. What Tyson Fury is about to do to Francis Ngannou, now we're really going to see. The only chance that Ngannou has is the puncher's chance and all that, but what are the sheer odds no. of that, man? It's like point zero 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 one percent Yeah. It's ridiculous. Even the even the puncher chance because it's like, oh well, this guy's a real fighter. You know, I just I don't ever see it happening, man. Tommy but, Fury couldn't land on KSI's barn door forehead. Yeah, what's he gonna do against a real fighter with head movement and a smaller forehead? I told you that head, dude. That head is really yeah, like it's, it's off putting. Now dude. I get it, dude. Yeah. Now I get it. Yeah. If he put a motorcycle helmet on, it would only cover his forehead. Dude, he his face would still he be. He wouldn't showing. need it, dude. He could. He, he wouldn't could, need it. He could hit a car from behind, going like ninety, <laughs> fly like twenty eight feet, crash that skull <laughs> into like cement, he and just get spears up. the car. He's like, <laughs> yeah, and and you know, like when you rub a little bit of paint off something, like yeah. and it has that shininess. That's what <laughs> it would look like. He would like buff it out real quick and go, "I'm all right." Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? YouTube that laugh, stupid dude. laugh. Oh. He'd be fine, dude. Nothing. He'd be okay. He'll never get brain damage or anything like that. That skull is fucking this. Oh, thick, it's ridiculous. Yeah. That noggin. Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> scary, man. I told you. I, I'd always see him with the stupid, um, the stupid bandanas and stuff, you know. And it just, it, why, why someone would need to wear a hat twenty four seven? Of course, they're either balding, it's always, or that. there's something. Tim and Pool. Him that head, yeah. Tim Pool. Tim Beanie Pool. Yeah. <laughs> That beanie never comes off, and and I've watched a lot of episodes. It's not; it's the same beanie. Yeah, he's ridiculous. He has money, a lot of money, Dude, a lot of money. That guy too, another smarmy one. Yeah, you, you know. How I, I feel stopped about watching him. I, you changed my whole opinion on him. I stopped watching. It's him. brutal, man. Enough, enough Hope. of the smarmy nerds. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. And I think it's. He, I remember Alex Jones went on and cracked a joke, and he's like. Please don't do that type of humor on the show. It's lowbrow, and it's like, dude, are you serious, dude? Shut up! It's Alex Jones. You didn't think he was gonna shout something outrageous? You you prick. had Alex Jones on your show, and, and then tried to and rein you, him and in. You want to calm him down? Fucking the whole point is that nerd. dude is that a tornado of craziness. That's the best thing about he him. He literally has the old school nerd voice. Yeah. Him and Ben Shapiro both, but I, I do like respect Dexter, Ben Shapiro. Like, yeah. He literally does like this. Yeah. I'm a fucking nerd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't stand the guy. Tim sucks. Tim sucks now, and its show's gotten really bland. I don't like it anymore. Yeah. I, I, how much nerd outrage can you listen to well, before it like loses its flair? Well, we talked about this. It's like when it was close to, when the election was, was won by Biden. When the election, <laughs> you know, when the election uh, was handed over to Biden that night, handed over. Um, we were all fired up. So I was watching shows that agreed. I was mad. I didn't know yeah, where to turn. Yeah, but that loses to. its luster. Oh, bad, so bad too, dude. Then like, you're like manufacturing. A couple it. months later, dude, I was like, no, I can't listen to this anymore. Like, yeah. I'm just done. I don't it's don't exhausting. Care, whatever. You this know? is what it's like yeah. to be in your little nerd head all yeah, day. I don't yeah. want to listen to it. I, bro. I just started listening to fun yeah. stuff again. I'm yeah. like, nah. I, can't I'm we mix mad. it in? Yeah. Like I'm sure. having. I'm edgy today, so I'm. I'm a little bit not as you know joking. Who cares? That's I good. Don't. But yeah. it's just like this day. Go back and watch our other stuff. There's days where we're in the best mood ever. Like we have a variety of different moods and attitudes. Sure. All they have is the one angry nerd speed. Well, I that's think, it. I think that's. I I've think, never heard Tim Pool tell a knock knock joke. I've yeah. never. He's never made me laugh. He's never been charming. He's and charismatic. never made me laugh. Never. He's, ne- he's never done something like just super cool. Like when Johnny Depp was in court. The whole time you're like, that dude is cool. Yeah. That's Hollywood charm right there. How do you stay cool, cool while your entire career is being, also, you know, assassinated? Dude, also, yeah. like, we grew up, all of our heroes were, like, James Dean. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just cool fucking people. That's, that's who we worship growing up. Yeah. Now it's like everyone has, like, a cardigan on, and <laughs> they wear flip-flops, and, you're like, you can't tell what gender they are, and everyone's just, like, androgynous. Yeah. This is not who I used to worship growing up. I always liked cool people. James Bond, Indiana Jones, Han Solo. Like, yeah. everyone was dope, dude. That's what you liked. Had a, a pithy line. 
line or a cool comment, could flirt well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, had a little swag about him, yeah. just something. Dress nice, good body language, confidence, decisiveness. That's Those are the qualities that we were taught to emulate, more or less. And, and these were just men. Like, yeah, just men. Yeah, Even just like, again, men. go watch the thing, yeah. guys. Go watch Kurt Russell and the thing. He doesn't come off all arrogant with this new age. Like, you're either overconfident or you have none at all. He was just self-possessed. He was just cool, and he just had a way about him that you're yeah. like, this guy is a real man. Like, he's dope. There's cool. there's a there's a line that it's never failed me that um if I could tell if I'm gonna get along with somebody or not immediately if they like Pete Davidson mm-hmm. we're never gonna get along <laughs> <laughs> that's your, your that's it litmus test exactly it, that's all there is to it it's like do you do you find him charming funny you do the, uh, it's like over the psychology trick where you pull up the card what's the first thing that comes to mind it's Pete Davidson yeah if they say anything positive you're like mm. it's like no it's like I'm sorry you're, there's something wrong with you you know what I mean this is the this this guy is literally the problem of everything yeah. today you know what I mean yeah you have a guy who's just brooding and depressed all the time untalented self-loathing yeah he he he, act, you know, he gives you. He tries to act like that blue collar, like, "Hey, I'm just a guy on the street doing drugs." And you're yeah. like, "No, no, no! You're a rich, famous guy that does drugs. Like, don't forget dude, it, dude. Like, fuck off. You're not yeah. blue collar. You haven't no. been for years. You're, you're and not years talented. And years. You're not funny. I don't get you. Yet you get these huge he roles. He can be funny, but he doesn't lean into it enough. All that other shit overtakes it. I don't know, man. I'm not saying he doesn't have any talent. I've enjoyed some of his stand up work and all that, but he's so messed up and weird. It's just like, ugh, ugh. I don't like that. Um. Don't you want to like? Isn't like he was so- with us? He was the movie. He was with Bill Burr. Oh, that was embar- that's who he really is to me. Yeah, like it's this, literally yeah. This isn't his life kid story? Yeah, who acts yeah. like an adolescent teenager, even though he's like thirty something years old. Um, uh, I forgot what comedian it was, but uh, it was on one of the roasts and Pete Davidson. The first time I've ever seen him, and um, a lot of people knew that his dad died in nine eleven. His dad was a firefighter and died in nine eleven. Huh? And uh, I, it might have. I think way too late for Greg Giraldo, but anyways, it was somebody, but he's like, he's like, uh, he, uh, Snoop has more smoke in his lungs than Pete Davidson's father. Ooh. <laughs> oh, so that's a good. good one. It was great. That's it was brutal. so brutal, dude. It was so freaking brutal, man. <laughs> Speaking of brutal. I like it when Patrice roasted him. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Patrice's last roast and everybody was talking about him dying and then he died like a month later. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, time for the, it's Halloween. That time aged for the like milk. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, speaking of brutal, man, Ronaldo is facing ninety nine lashes for hugging and kissing an Iranian painter, Fatima Hamimi. But I guess you know he's getting off easy because he's Ronaldo. I don't yeah. understand what's the problem. Like he's, I guess Iran wants to. I want they want him to be publicly punished for hug. You know, you, you can't do shit out there. They got these archaic laws. Uh, you know, women can't. You know, they want him to be punished. They want they want to give him lashes, and he. I, oh, literally, I thought yeah. this was like social lashes. And the reason why you're I, talking about like a cat. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're lashing him. Like yeah, like like they're gonna tie him up to like some like like a uh, log like this, and he's gonna be looking back. You know, it's gonna be bad. Dude. Good lord, what's your name? You know, it's going to be bad, bro. For giving a hug and a kiss. For giving a hug and a kiss to some Iranian painter. And uh, the reason why that's a problem is because he's still young and he's got to play in the uh, Middle East and he's got to do so that, you know, what's he, what's he going to do? You know what I mean? Do you, I would have you, no idea. I wouldn't take the lashes. No, Fuck I would you. quit. I would Fuck just be rich and just quit. you in place, yeah. I'd be like, we're done here. Yeah. Do you think he has enough money to retire? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I think it's I think those soccer players make like stupid money. Like, like I'm pretty like, sure it's like, the one number one sport in the world. Yeah, like really. not American rich, like Middle East crazy rich, mm-hmm. where it's like castles and where they pay yeah. for everything with diamonds. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like 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 his house is something ridiculous. Right. You know what I mean? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so stupid, dude. This whole world is fucking stupid. Everything is ridiculous. You're gonna what? You're gonna beat this guy up because he gave a hug and a kiss to somebody? Like I understand they're archaic. Blah yeah, blah yeah. blah. Enough already. Cut the shit. What if he squeezed her fucking ass and she was all excited and just fucking pinched and he's like, "Guys, love your fucking art." <laughs> <laughs> and there's just like this Iranian officer just looking at him like, "Fuck." Good lord, yeah. <laughs> like, like this just went from lashes to beheading real fucking quick. <laughs> <laughs> they have the executioner axe grinder behind him, <laughs> Ronaldo, sparking up that Ronaldo blade. turns around with his soccer shorts and just fucking hard on, just shoving out of his jeans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'd be so disrespectful, man. I'd be fucking hilarious, to be honest. That man. that happened at all, though, it just reeks of just publicity, and they just want us to talk if about it. If he does it, if he does like, it, come on. I will never. Do you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like some publicity horseshit to make us hate Iran even more because of all this new crap that's going on. What are the heroes that happens right now when they all start fighting and shit, right? Okay, well, girl, that's Palestine and. Um, Am I in the wrong place? Yeah, it's right. Palestine and Israel, but dig I've this. I've become paranoid, like everything's a conspiracy <laughs> now. I understand. He <laughs> always <laughs> hated Alex Iran. Jones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now I'm just like, it's all fake. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, it's, it's the Middle <laughs> they East. They made it up for the ratings. What I'm tired of is, and I'm, listen, I, I won't go on a long round with this. I'm just tired of America trying to change the Middle East. You're not going to calm, yeah, we're to not gonna the calm them down. You know what I we're mean? We're never there for anything outside of personal gain. Yeah, Come yeah. on, No, man. but our civilians think so. We don't even we care about our own people. We think we're making peace. Oh, really? Yeah. As Maui burns down and we send them $1.50 exactly. to split? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, they're really showing how much they care about us. Uh, they care about other countries that much but yeah. not us like, yeah i'm sick of that here, leader man. the free world shit dude i don't care what happens in the middle east honestly let them figure it out who cares who cares it's their wars it's not let our them problem, figure it out. yeah we got enough shit to deal with but if uh but if ronaldo does do this dude it's like you fucking bastard you're just that just a kowtow to these people just to let them know like hey I'm I wouldn't cool. do it. You're not hitting me. I'm not dude. xenophobic. No. I'll go over there and do this. You no. know what I mean? Yeah. No. He should he should honestly do like a public like like speech and just fuck you. That would you be a, he I mean? would get shot or killed immediately, I would you think imagine. He'd be oh yeah, I'm pretty sure. Look what they're willing to do over a hug. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, suck it, and just starts shaking his yeah, bag at everybody. They, their reach only as goes as far as their land. You know what I mean? Like, what are they going to do? Fly over in their 1940s helicopter that we left at some point? You know what I mean? He should come out with a line of t shirt <laughs> merchandise, but it's just like printed like a bomb vest on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucked up. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. it's like, it has the bomb vest, but then in the same letters, I love <laughs> New York. It's like, I love Iran. <laughs> you know how we make the, uh, the t- High t-shirt. <laughs> it's There's their a version. Noose. It's a new thing. It's their down. version. <laughs> it's his rib wrap, and then on the back it says street rat. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. It'd be so funny, man. He just starts mocking them 24-7. Oh, I'd love him so much, dude. Oh, I'd love him so much for that, man. Sick of the stupid Middle East, man. I'm tired of it. <laughs> Dumb. What else do we got? It's dumb. Honestly, um, it's gonna have to be a short one, guys. This is the pre-work episode, as always. Being real, I mean that. That's about it. You that's know? about it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, dude, short honestly, and sweet. It's a bro, quick rant. It, if I'm not hearing, it, like, listen, I go over the news and I tag and I bring out stuff that. Oh no, we, we do have like one talk. more thing to talk about. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries. So Anthony Cumia. Oh, we gotta give that love. Yeah. You yeah. want to set it up? I, I, yeah. We talked about it on the last episode. He was in the hospital, but yeah, he's still he's still in the hospital. He's still uh, doing his physical therapy. We wish you nothing but the best, buddy. We love you. Still supporting, uh, my yeah, friends. Still absolutely supporting. a hero in our eyes. Always will be all the way to the end. Yeah, you're amazing you're an amazing human being i we know exactly who you are you, you say crazy shit but we know that you got a good heart you've always been a good guy dude he provided countless decades of entertainment improved the quality of my yes. life was fascinating to listen to an interesting guy yeah i think he's a net positive quite honestly i love that dude he was you know he, he was a trailblazer he yeah. was fantastic yeah um and i want people to go on right now compounds uh youtube channel and check out uh gavin mcginnis is hosting the show and his yes. absence which also thanks gavin I appreciate yeah Keeping it alive, keep the friend. legacy alive, he's a dude. Good he's, friend, dude. He's yeah. a great guy. He, he's a good guy, and uh, he played uh, clips from uh, Anthony back in the day, and one of them was on Howard Stern. And it's funny because he was doing he was doing an imitation of Jackie Martin. Mm, it was mm, Howard's great. Now. Yeah, he was doing it, and Howard was going off. He's like, dude. He's like, you're funny, dude. What? Who are you? Hysterical. Like going off. It's like he knew. You know everyone, I mean? knew. everyone knew if that this guy was Opie said the same something. thing yeah. he was like I knew instantly he's like, he goes none of these radio shows want to pick this guy he's like they're crazy yeah. also he received in my opinion this is the highest praise you could ever get Patrice O'Neill said to Anthony on multiple occasions that he had the fastest access to funny out of anyone he's ever met before. Where he pulled it from Patrice, nuts. a guy who literally only just bashes and terrorizes people almost entirely. Yeah. He gave him the highest praise possible. So that alone tells you. And every, anyone who knows real comedy knows about Patrice O'Neill and the legend that that guy was. That guy's <laughs> word is as good as gold. Um, Some of the few books that I've read in my life, I read his autobiography. No and, shit. Uh, I never read it. It was so funny, dude. There was this one part where his dad his mom used to tell him that the boys were acting up him and his brother 
and his dad would go in there with a belt and he would whip their asses. <laughs> and Anthony said that he couldn't get enough. He was a big, big guy, so he couldn't get enough, like, you know, leverage. Like, yeah, leverage inside the bunk bed. So he'd go up in the bunk bed and he'd go, no, no, no. And his dad could barely hit him with it. And that's how he would avoid, like, the strikes from the belt. And he said that Ronaldo when, should do that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll bring out a big, huge bunk bed for him. <laughs> the bunk bed defense. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so he said that uh, after his his dad had wound up leaving his family, and he left to California. There's, there's, there's you got to read it. There's more to it. Like, um, and his mom had to take over. So she said that they were, or he said they were acting up one time, and the mom grabbed the belt, and you know, like, okay, you you guys think you're getting away with shit now? Well, I'll do it. And he said his mom went in there, and she said he, it, her arms were too short to reach all the way back, so she wasn't even able to do this. So she took the belt oh, and the she, she gave slap. it the sideways slap, and uh. And Instead of having it on the belt side, she put it on the buckle side, oh. and it hit the head of his cock. <laughs> and he said, "He said that there was a girlish scream throughout the entire building. A shriek. He was screaming, and he had to go to the hospital because his penis had swelled she up. She knocked to the, his helmet off. Yes, dude. She hit him so hard, and he said, "He said he screamed like a girl, but he didn't know he could do that. He said it hurt so bad <laughs> that it went to a new level of pain. And he said he almost passed out from it. That he was screaming." So uh, he said, the mom instantly dropped the belt. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Even she fell back. Yeah. So he paid for all those missed beatings dude, with like one helmet thrust. Yeah, dude, you know how it's like, you know how it's like, all right, if it hits you, it's going to hurt no matter what. But you know how like if it just well, when it you nicks enough, you, it's yeah, way worse. Way worse, dude. She said it tagged him right in the head. He said he was screaming. <laughs> I, dude, I, I was hearing that I could not he stop screeched. laughing. I just could not stop laughing. It's so funny, man. But he, I always laugh. I want to read that book. Yeah, I can't imagine good. that would be anything but fasting um real quick do you know if he's in okay condition is he just still in the hospital yeah he's, he's doing good so he's uh, stable yeah he's stable he, he had God. his operation he's doing his physical therapy i think he should be out of the hospital soon i think he's probably going to take it light for a while though man i, I don't see I mean, I, why wouldn't you yeah right? it was a big operation i mean people want him back to work monday but i just don't know you happening. can't do let him recover like i'd yeah. rather have him for many more years than push him into the show now and have him drop dead obviously and plus also, people don't understand like he puts a lot of energy out on his show. He's a, he has that anger, too. Like, I understand Anthony Coombe. He has a lot of passion, too. Yeah. So if you have heart problems and you're putting out that kind of fiery passion, talking about all the bullshit of the world, you think that's not going to take a toll? Of course. It is. That ticker's going, man. Um, it is. And not to mention, he's moving to South Carolina soon. I mean, the house is almost built. He got screwed over on the contractor. I heard about that, yeah. man. But it's like when he goes, he's not going to have the studio anymore. I, he's, I mean, why rent a studio that you're not going to be at? Sure. I think he's building one inside of his house. Sure. I don't know if Garrett and those guys are going to be still working with him. Right. But I, I mean, the show is going to take a, a dramatic turn in how it how it's you know produced. Produced. Sure. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know how that's going to look, but I think he should probably go out there. Relax for a little bit and then fire up something new. Yeah, let him get his balance, man. Sure, yeah. Give him a break. He deserves it. Speaking of producers, we did notice that Ryan Katsu Rivera subbed to our channel. I just wanted to say that we really appreciate the support, as you could possibly imagine. Thank you very much. Thank you. We subbed you back. That meant a lot to us, man. Thank you. We appreciate it. You rock too, man. Yeah, we love you, man. We came and saw you. What was it, last year? Yeah, we were the guys in uh, kind of the back there, and you were walking by. It was Yeah, he did the Trump impression. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And we said, we said, what up, Ryan? Yeah, that was us. Yeah. (laughs) That was uh, before we had the podcast or anything. We came out and saw you guys. That was before. Gavin, Anthony. Yeah, it was before. It was a while before, actually. Yeah, that was before. But you guys actually inspired us to do this. All you guys, Gavin, you, Ryan, you know, Anthony, Opie, we always talk about all that. You guys were a big part of our lives and still are, and we really appreciate it. So that meant a lot to us, man. Thank you. We love you guys. Whether you watch it or not, we appreciate the sub and the support at all, man. That was awesome. Absolutely. Also, um, good luck on your upcoming fight. Billy told me that you were boxing with another fucking asshole on YouTube. (laughs) And I fully believe that he's going to, from what you've told me about Ryan's back. I, I didn't know that you trained your whole life, dude. That's dope. You know, it's funny too. Is the guy? He's like, I'm gonna fucking rip your head off. I'm gonna, take, you know. <laughs> and you know how that never works. I gotta learn I mean? about the other guy though, because I don't know what kind of background. I'll send you he the clip. Has. Yeah, I'll send you the clip. He's he he goes on Misery Loves Company with um with Kevin Brennan all the time. Mm. Oh, no shit. Dude, he's kind of like, you know Kevin who he reminds Brennan. me of? He kind of reminds me of like kind of an Ari Shafir. Yeah, like Ari Shafir is funny. Don't get me wrong, but you know how there's that permanently like you just said this you know how we have different levels like well, sometimes we're mad sometimes we're fucking joking yeah around you're it. seeing this real human beings yeah. in real moods he's one of those guys that's permanently pissed off like kevin brennan right you know what i mean but it's like you could tell dude like the dude just doesn't he doesn't train I, I, not not nearly as oh, much he's as gonna get yeah he's gonna get slaughtered there's no question nice he's the big bags under his eyes dude, and he's tight when, it, when, yeah. it, when it's close to the time are you think it's gonna be betting 
you think we could bet on it? No, I do. They're, oh. they're literally doing it at an underground jam. It'll be obviously it's going to be on Censored TV and sure. whatever that guy's show is. Well, you we'll know watch it. I mean? Hopefully, oh, we, we can watch it watch live. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ryan Short, but he's going to kill this guy. Yeah, he knows. He's, what he's also doing. built. Did no, he's in great shape. Dude. Yeah, he, saw? He's in phenomenal yeah, shape. I couldn't believe he's a tank. Yeah, yeah, he is. And hilarious. Yeah. So again, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. This is going to be a short and a sweet one. Nikki Pringles has to go to work. I don't even know what time it is. Yeah, I have to leave. All right. So we'll be back in a couple of days. Sorry, guys. We tried to shoot two episodes last week like we promised, but OBS kept crashing. Yeah. So we didn't want to put out just an audio episode. So here we are this week. Here's the first one. We'll do another one on Friday. We're going to try to keep the schedule moving forward. But always remember, have your conversations, not their conversations. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to your community. Let's be good people again until next time god bless and peace Kaka. bam baby bye bye smooth boom bye. that was good right i enjoyed yeah, it oh, yeah yeah it's the best okay beautiful